Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today let us talk about buying a computer. Is a second hand unit worth it or buying a brand new entry level computer is better? Definitely the reason why I made this video is based on my personal experience. We have already bought a small HP or a mini HP computer and it is still working up to this day without any issue being used by my daughter for her online school. Now, we purchased a second-hand computer which is the HP Prodest 400G7 at 10,500 pesos and that is actually around 200 USD. And for me, the price range is actually great. But we'll try to discuss and compare if I purchased or bought a new computer. But for now, let us see the specs of this unit that I got. It is running with Intel i5-10500. 6 cores, 12 threads, 8 gig of DDR4 RAM, 1 terabyte of hard disk, Wi-Fi 6 LAN card with Bluetooth capability, 1 PCIe Gen 3 16X, 1 PCIe Gen 3 1X, and M.2 PCIe slot for storage. Other specs can be checked on their official website and I will include the link on the description below. Now let us try to check on how it performs. For basic usage like working from home, online school, online shopping, Excel, watching videos, it actually works great as you can see on this video. No doubt about it that it will be more than enough for those type of usage. Now let's try to check for some heavy applications like maybe photo or video editing. And as you can see for this video editing like Premiere Pro, it will work but not that great. For this sample, we have a 1080p video just trying to scrub and it is fairly acceptable performance. But if you try to add effects and 4K videos, it will definitely take a while to load and finish your project. Now for people who always want to ask, can it game? Typically, you need a dedicated graphics card to have a great gaming experience. And our unit does not have one, so we will be using the GPU instead. But for now, let us see some sample games that we have tested on this unit. Okay, right now we are getting around 15 FPS. And our GPU utilization is 99% while our CPU is just barely working at all. It's around 9 or 10. And let's try to check the settings. Okay, for the settings, we are currently on graphics. We are set to low by default and of course the display mode is 1080 full screen which is the native resolution of our computer and let's try to check our 720p resolution if there will be an improvement while we are still on low default okay then okay and as you can see guys definitely this is better we are getting around 30 FPS with the low settings on Genshin Impact. We are doing CSGO and our settings is actually set to 720p as well. And our video resolution as you can see, 720p and everything is set to medium as much as possible. And we are getting around 30 FPS, 30, 24. We drop at 24 FPS. Our minimum is 24 FPS and 13 actually there are some issues and we are getting some 13 and usually our average of 30 fps okay but we are dropping as low as 13 fps for this one for the uhd 630 graphics card as you can see it works but not a great gaming experience but somehow i can still call it playable Lastly, since this unit comes with an HDD instead of an SSD, let us try to check on how long does it take to boot. And there you have it. It took around 85 seconds to boot and honestly, the loading of the games actually takes a while to load as well. Okay, that is the performance that we are able to get with the basic hardware. But don't get disappointed because there is still room for upgrade with this unit. Like we can add one more memory stick and the HDD can be replaced with an NVMe SSD. And of course, we can also add a graphics card with this unit. But the available GPUs are very limited because you can only 
add one small form factor of GPU, which is actually one slot. And for the sake of upgrade, we have already purchased and installed an NVMe SSD and additional 8 gig of RAM. Definitely loading files and application was faster than before. But let us check on how fast it boots right now. That was a significant improvement from 85 seconds to 33 seconds, more than half that time for loading. While for games, the performance stays the same, no significant improvement. And of course, we also tried to scrub at an ATP video on Premiere and it was better than having an 8 gig of RAM. Now let us try to summarize if this is actually a good option to take instead of buying a new computer. The total cost of buying the ProDesk and a new monitor with mouse and keyboard is around 16,405 pesos. While if I try to build a new computer with the same specs, it will cost me around 25,345 pesos. And remember, you still need to add more with that price because I didn't factor in the operating system. While the HP ProDesk comes with an OEM license, so we don't have to worry about Windows licensing. Both units will likely perform the same, but the second-hand unit is definitely cheaper. Okay, now, what will be the problem if you go second-hand? First is warranty. You might only get a personal warranty from the seller, which usually gives one week to one month to return if there are any issues. Second is it is a little bit scary or actually scary to purchase from marketplace because there are a lot of scammers. Third would be the room for upgrade. Like the GPU for this specific unit is limited, but it is actually good that there is still a room for upgrade unlike the HP mini series that they produce. For my personal advice, if you are looking for a budget computer for online schooling, work from home, very light games, I would definitely choose this small form factor since your primary use is not gaming. Some arguments that might say that it is not actually worth it since there is no room for upgrade in the future. Yeah, that might be true, but guys, just looking on the CPU pricing of the Intel i5-10400, it is already 9,900 pesos. It is almost the same price of the whole HP Pro Desk, which has an i5-10500. And in the future, if you really want to game, you can take out the CPU memory and hard disk and still use it on your new gaming computer. That CPU is still an i5-6 core 12 threads and definitely will still be good for gaming. So it is really hard to decide which one to take. But if you really want to save some money, take the secondhand unit and take some risk. But please, be extra careful on whom you do transactions with. And I think that is all. I really want to hear your input regarding on buying a secondhand unit. So please leave some comments and suggestions down below and let us try to talk about it. And in addition, I have already purchased a GPU for this ProDesk and will create another video for that one and see if my decision is really worth it. And again, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe. And bye.